Hare Krishna. So now we are going to discuss Gopal Champu by Srila Jiva Goswami, translated into English by His Holiness Bhanu Swami Maharaj. So uh, today is the session five. Uh, we are starting from chapter four, the birth celebration. Just as on the previous day, skillful Madhu Kantha had glorified Krishna, the next day, Snigdha Kantha, taking his turn, glorified Krishna in the shining assembly of Nanda. Madhu Kantha eagerly requested, just as you relish the topics about Krishna that I spoke yesterday, today I will relish with my ears what you speak. Though a jiva becomes the enjoyer, my senses desire to be the enjoyer. Snigdha Kanta said, the joyful old woman then approached Nanda and others who were in the in order to milk the cows. Stopping a quick gait, the overjoyed woman saw before her Nanda and others. The joyful old woman then approached Nanda and others who were in the cow pens in order to milk the cows. Stopping a quick gait, the overjoyed woman saw before her Nanda and others. She wanted to speak and the short distance seemed a long way. Holding fruit and flowers in her hands, she informed them of the birth of a son. Whatever little she managed to say, she repeated and they all respected her. Madhukanta said, what did she say? Snigdakanta spoke with a smile. She said, our king has given birth to a son. Will you not come and see him? Madhukanta said with a smile. Then what happened? Snigdakanta said, like peacocks in a fresh shower, the cowards begin shouting in excitement on hearing the sweet news. Nanda's hair stood on end. He appeared like a tree with fresh buds. He displayed the greatest bliss, but not by words. Madhukanta said, then what happened? Snigdhakanta said, filled with eager smiles and great reverence, they all offered the old woman respects. Coming quickly forward, she said, may you and your son have auspiciousness. She offered him an auspicious coconut and durva sprouts anointed with sandalwood, turmeric and kunkuma. Nanda looked at Upananda and then spoke in joy. Take all these cows gathered for milking and give them all, not excluding even one, to her husband. They all said in great joy, give her whatever suitable item she desires. Did a son's birth take place or did joy take birth as like a son? Nanda was unable to distinguish the two. Bathing and dressing properly, Nanda made a vow to give cows in charity, as had previously stated, as he had previously stated, though his offerings were plentiful, they seemed meager. Surrounded by Upananda and others, wearing the finest clothing, he desired to go to the house. On Rohini's order from the gate of the town, two musicians began sounding drums. The sounds announced, Nanda has become blissful, Nanda has become blissful. In the evening, one could hear the rumblings of instruments from the heavens proclaiming, victory, victory. But one could not. Hearing those sounds, the villagers came and bliss began to discuss loudly. Though, he became stunned out of joy. He was pulled by his eagerness. Though he was eager, he began to tremble intensely. Since he served Narayana, Narayana supported him with his hands. Gaining some self-control, Nanda approached his house. When the cowards arrived at Nanda's house, many friends were standing around together. As many streams entered the Ganga, many people converged into a huge crowd. Thousands of women holding auspicious items came and blissfully worshipped Yashoda on the occasion of a new son. Nanda joined the noisy crowd like the full moon amidst the constellations. In this way, he was adorned with the Anudatha, Udatha, and Swarita accents of Vedic chanting. 
since Brahmanas were also eager to come, Nanda called them first individually with respect. The auspicious, skillful, excellent Brahmana sat in the assembly gracefully and chanting mantras for giving blessings, placed auspicious items on the child's head. Surrounded by the Brahmanas, Nanda was overcome with happiness. While bathing, decorating and hearing the auspicious praise, Nanda thought, I praise this birth of a son and nothing else. That day, everyone just by hearing about bathing but not taking bath themselves achieved the infinite results of that act. When the elders said that the birth ceremony should be performed, Nanda prepared to do it. Nanda worshipped the wives of his elder brothers who became happy on seeing the happiness of a mother with a son. Nanda then performed the Nandi Mukha Shraddha ceremony in which the forefathers personally recited auspicious prayers. Nanda then entered the inner chambers with boys endowed with Vedic knowledge and placed an auspicious pot on an altar in front of the delivery room. Rohini, having the most sublime desires, understood that Nanda had come screening of the bed of Yashoda, who gives fame to three families, she brought the covered child to the entrance. The wives of Nanda's brothers asked in a joking, priceless items for decorating themselves, and Nanda promised these to them. Then they showed him the newborn. He saw the child nourished by persons without lamentation, the chief of blue lotuses, whose splendor no one could surpass. He was the playground of rare, soft, softless, spotless beauty. He was the playground of rare, soft, spotless beauty. All his limbs were superior to an image of flawless blue chintamani crafted by astonishing Vishwakarma with the greatest endeavor. His soft curled hair was the color of new, Shaivala plants growing in the still waters of the Yamuna, spread with ointment made of powdered Vaiduria gems. His eyes were purer than the central petals of the blue lotus held in the hand of Lakshmi. His hands, feet and lips defeated the buds growing on a desire tree of Vaikuntha. The child was attractive with cloth, the hue of Aritalo or saffron, defeating the color of gold. Bathing the child with milk in the form of his tears, Nanda remained stunned for some moments in astonishment. Many emotions arose within Nanda. Then Nanda, endowed with profound nature, became completely stunned. After some time, he recovered and Upananda's wife, desiring to increase his bliss, placed the child in his lap. When he held the child in his lap and Yashoda from the other room heard the words, when he held, held the child in his lap and Yashoda from the other room heard the words, the son is in the lap of Nanda. She shed tears. Her hair stood on end and she became stunned. The Brahmanas with the name Sharma performed the birth ceremony for bestowing intelligence to the child. Chanting the mantra, staring Bhustvai, they fed the child ghee using the little finger decorated with a gold ring. They then gave blessing for long life by chanting Agnir Ayushman in the child's right ear. Chanting the mantra, starting with Divaspati, they touched the child. They consecrated the earth with the mantra starting with Om Hridam Annam Pranaya Pranaya in the four directions and the center. They had the child lie down in the bed starting Ashma Bhava. They purified the mother with the mantra starting with Idhash Idhasi. They sprinkle water on the breasts of the mother while chanting the Rig Veda mantras starting with Imam Stanam and Yaste Stanam. They turn the child on his back while chanting the mantra Apo Deveshu near his head and fixing a water pot there. After these auspicious acts were completed, the time to cut the umbilical cord arrived. A nurse who lost control out of bliss became steady and with hair standing on end, said several times, this is amazing. In all lakes, 
navels, we see the lotus stalks, but not the flowers. Here, however, we see no stalk, umbilical cord, but only a lotus. Oh, Lord of Raja, look at the auspicious marks of this dark complexion child. His auspiciousness surpasses the marks described in the Samudraka, bodily characteristic scriptures. On his feet are the remarkable signs of conch, wheel, thunderbolt, and lotus, and on his hands are other auspicious signs. The composition of his body is most amazing. When all were overcome with us, Amna boy said with a clever smile, all people who give blessings, since you who have spotless dharma, how can the impurity of cutting an umbilical cord told by the sages come upon you? Therefore, there's no umbilical cord to cut. Hearing this, Nanda's hair stood on end and his moon-like face blossomed. He went outside to the sacrificial area with the young Brahmana boys and remained there giving bliss to all. When his servants brought auspicious items, he began giving charity profusely to the qualified Brahmanas. As he was going to give charity, he sent out messengers to announce the news of giving to the Brahmanas. However, he could not find sufficient messengers to announce invitations. He gave 10,000 cows, then 100,000, then a million and 2 million. He gave 2 million cows with gold-plated horns, but, this, but his heart was not satisfied. He gave seven piles of sesame, each 10 dronas in volume. The Brahmanas estimated that his gifts of gems and gold were even greater than the amount of sesame he gave because his gifts were without limit, the eyes of all people filled with astonishment. Unlimited Brahmanas introduction, but they were all recognized by the spiritual effulgence. All the Brahmanas knowledgeable of the Vedas and their particular fields, the skillful singers, bards, panegyrists, and musicians joined for a festival. When each produced their special sound, all the different sounds seemed to merge into one beautiful sound to the amazement of the universe. The unconscious land of Raja seemed to awaken with joy what to speak of its inhabitants. It became completely filled with people as if inundated with water. The flax seemed to dance. Though the cows, bulls, and calves had natural affection, that affection seemed to be oozing out in the form of turmeric mixed with oil applied to their bodies. Joy seemed to be displayed externally in the form of flower garlands, peacock feathers, gold necklaces, and mineral paints. If the animals had this appearance, what to speak of the cowards? Today, they also became famous for their known as protectors of the earth, go. Endowed with rasa and bhava and decorated with ornaments, they were equal to great poetic works which have rasa, bhava, and literary ornaments. Holding many jewel gifts in their hands with joy, they show the strength of prema. How described the chief coward woman, Yashoda, overcome with bliss at the birth of a child whose heart was colored with all good qualities and who was the embodiment of all life of Gokula's people and the mother of Krishna, who was the life of all beings. Many women had previously given up their ornaments, grieving because Yashoda had no son. When they heard news of the newborn son, they became transformed with happiness. Putting on the ornaments as if dancing, they went to the house, desiring to show auspic auspiciousness and being transformed with affection. They held boxes of huge jewels in their hands in great bliss and spread splendor everywhere. This effulgence of this group of gopis' faces defeats a pile of kunkuma. Yashoda's joy manifested completely on the occasion of a son's birth. They sang as follows. In the night, Yashoda gave birth to a beautiful son. The women came to her house for this reason. In going there, they dressed themselves quickly. The path became filled with fallen garlands. The swaying earrings lit up the cheeks. They were not aware that the cloth had fallen from their shoulders. 
The effulgence was such that it seemed they were wearing necklaces of lightning, the bells on the clothing jingle, but take the other, the women laughed among themselves. The devatas of music played instruments which sang, Raja became visible and Krishna joined. When such joy appeared, Upananda and others generally sob or began to sport, dance and sing. The women came and gave the child blessings. Spring, sprinkling everyone with milk, they began to sing. Oh, Prince of Raja, oh, young child, please protect us in Vrindavana for a long time. You are the object of our desires. Give us auspiciousness. We desire to see you. Your, we desire to see your smiling face at all times. We desire to see you crawl in the yard. Please go about holding the tail of a calf. You please, you, you will please us by playing with the calves. The fortunate person will see you playing with the cows while you kill the demons with your strength and give special results to your devotees. Absorbed in singing at the great festival, the women sprinkled oil mixed with turmeric and went outside. Sprinkling each other with milk and yogurt, becoming all white, the chief cowards began dancing like waves in the milk ocean. The women sang while watching the men dance. Oh, friends, look at the king of cowards. He's sporting because of the birth of a son. Filled with piles of yogurt, the place appears like the milk ocean. Nanda has a belt of vasuki around his waist and is joyful in the company of his friends. He gives gifts which astonish all. The moon rose after the churning of the milk ocean, but Krishna's arise in before the churning of the milk ocean. They compose the following verse. This was not a stream of yogurt which was thrown, but the movement of a cloud. It was not clumps of butter thrown about, but water drops falling from a cloud. It was not turmeric discoloring the water, but a flash of lightning. In great joy, the festival became a monsoon shower. Krishna's uncles on the mother's side approached his maternal grandfather for protection. But Nanda's brothers attacked them as if to steal their kingdom. The brothers then pulled the maternal uncles into the yogurt to punish them. Jendas Nanda, collecting uh, abundant treasures, called many people who lived by the qualities and not considering fit or unfit, distributed carefully to them piles of jewels as much as they could carry. The custom is that the receiver requests and the, then the donor gives. In the case of Nanda, however, this was reversed and he gave without the request being made. When Nanda gave charity without anyone requesting, the desired reason Chintamani stone looked like misers while giving. Nanda thought, may Narayana be pleased and give blessings to my child. When, this, when the festival is over, all desired to bathe, they went to the Yamuna. Everyone with, without shyness played in the water with Nanda, rubbing fragrant oils on their bodies, taking bath. Then they, they then dressed in splendid clothing and smeared sandalwood with camphor on their bodies. In a grass hut, Pounamasi was sitting with a satisfied heart since her desires had borne fruit. Offering her respects and having her hear the bad songs, they returned to the king's house. Finishing the joyful bath, Nanda, like a moon generating bliss, filled the ocean in the form of his friends. After charity was completed, all the guests whom Rohini had respectfully invited ate food cooked in ghee and loaded with the treasures from the festival written to their houses. Filled with bliss and recalling the day's events, they stayed awake in the night dancing and singing. How can, mm -hmm. how can one describe Rohini's joy when Krishna was born? Though she was separated from her husband, Vasudeva, she decorated herself nicely on the occasion. How astonishing. See her pure beauty. Nanda considered his great fortune that she came to his house. From the day that Krishna took birth, the ocean of Raja daily increased in wealth and astonishment. And the place became the residence of many excellent women who took Krishna from cowards. And the place became the residence of many excellent women who took birth from cowards. Madhukanta began to think, ah, the Bhagavatam conversation explains this. Tata, Arabya. Nandasya Vraja Sarva Samruddhiman Hare Nivasatma Gunai Rama Kridham Abhu Nripa O Maharaja Parikshit, the home of Nanda Maharaja 
is eternally the abode of the supreme personality of Godhead and his transcendental qualities and is therefore always naturally endowed with the opulence of all wealth. Yet beginning from Lord Krishna's appearance there, it became the place for the pastimes of the goddess of fortune, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.5.18. Thinking, Snigdakanta then spoke, Nanda has such a wealth of qualities. Who can describe his unlimited charities, unlimited wealth, his unlimited arrangement for festivals, his unlimited number of servants, his unlimited protection of all people and his unlimited attention? Concluding the topic, he said, Oh, king of the cowards, you have given birth to a child who has a cowards by his wealth of qualities. <laughs> after all after all had come to pass as on the previous day everyone returned to the houses and Nanda returned to the cow pens chapter 5 killing Putana the next day in the splendid assembly auspicious Madhukanta making everybody anxious with the sound of his voice began to speak oh Snigdakanta please listen in the faultless evening a messenger in disguise sent by Vasudeva who in, is the form of all devatas, arrived at the lotus feet of Nanda. Recognizing him as the best among Vasudeva's old servants, Nanda asked how he was. Offering respects, the messenger spoke, how can there be unrestricted peace when cruel comes as rakshasas eat everyone? This you can infer by seeing my torn, worn clothing. It was not possible to depart and cross using a boat during the day. I've crossed the Yamuna by swimming. With damp clothing, I've arrived here in the evening. Nanda laughed loudly, laughing loudly said, please tell any other particular event. The messenger said, it's necessary. Now it's likely we, we will all die. Our life is in danger, that my master is without assistance. All have become subservient to Kamsa. Nanda said, what has happened to him at present? The messenger said, what has happened? Because of that, he has sent me, trying to act for his benefit. Nanda said, what is that? The messenger said, in the middle of the night, a daughter was born to Vasudeva from Devaki in the prison house. Nanda said, then what happened? The messenger said, she tried to hide the child, but the guards heard the child cry. They went to inform evil, angry Kamsa residing in the inner palace. Depraved Kamsa from the day after the marriage of Devaki, fearing the message of the Devatas, had remained alert with agitation. Just by hearing a syllable of the guards' words, he became completely agitated and with hair flying everywhere, Cruel Kamsa took his sword and went to the prison. Nanda in fear said, then what happened? The messenger said, going quickly to the bed in the prison without mercy, like a headstrong person with no shame, merciless Kamsa took the girl from the lap of wailing Devaki and angrily threw the child against the stone in front of Devaki. For that evil deed, Kamsa had gained the criticism and disrespect of all people. With tearful eyes, Nanda said, ha, huh, how can you let us in news? Let that be, but do not speak such unwelcome topics in my house. You are sure that the friend of Devaki will become completely grief-stricken and Rohini, Vasudeva's wife in separation, will faint. The messenger said, oh Lord, please hear with steady heart what was most astonishing. Nanda said, oh, long-lived messenger, please keep speaking. The messenger said, though the child was thrown from sinful Kamsa's hand, she did not fall on the stone, but rather putting her feet on his head and rising upwards quickly in the sky, she revealed an extraordinary celestial form. Nanda said, what was that form? The messenger said, she had a dark complexion and eight arms holding the chakra and other weapons. She rode a, on a lion in the sky and was praised profusely by the devatas. With raised heads, everyone gazed at her. Nanda said in astonishment, what did she say? The messenger said, oh, Nanda, it was not otherwise. Please hear more auspicious news. She spoke with pride and pleasure. Oh, sinful Kamsa, why have you tried to kill me? Your attempt is futile. Your previous enemy has been born already somewhere else. This enemy will come from there and kill you. You should not try to kill any more young children. Nanda said with astonishment, 
certainly because of Vasudeva's bhakti, the child became Bhadrakali and spoke auspicious words. Today, finally, someone has disrespected him by words. The messenger said, oh, respectable king, please hear another astonishing fact. Thinking that his enemies, the Devatas, had announced that the eighth child of his sister would be a danger, comes an enemy, disguised as a brother called Devaki and Vasudeva from the prison, and holding their feet while begging pardon, repenting that he had killed her six previous sons, he freed them from their chains. Nanda said, Nanda said, then what happened? The messenger said, Devaki, because of her gentle nature, did not become angry with the killer of her children. Vasudeva considered as follows. Previously, he dried us up and pulverized us, and now he soaks us in ghee and pulverizes us. Though he is by nature crooked, because of the strength of his good character, he is now gentle. Taking permission from evil Kamsa, Vasudeva returned to his house with his wife, but he did not trust Kamsa because Kamsa, coming from a different lineage, always afflicted those under his care. He afflicted his mother just as a grindstone scrapes another grindstone. Nanda said with a smile, what did this uncivilized brute do from, the mor from that morning on? The messenger said he did what was natural to him. The evil fellow performed further wicked acts. Nanda said, please tell us. The messenger said, the black spot on this dynasty, Kamsa, called his demon friends and told them what happened in the night. These associates, like demonic Rahu, breakers of laws like ghosts, held a clamorous meeting which sounded like tigers roaring. The sound, conquering Mahendra mountain, afflicted the attendants of Vishnu, the Devatas, the worshippers of the Devatas, the cows and the Brahmanas. This afflicted Vishnu himself. He cruelly afflicted children 10 days old or less. He accomplished this with the help of his evil friends. By their advice, he gave charity. Nanda, on hearing those angry words, spoke with anger and fear. What peaceful instructions has Vasudeva given me? The messenger said, Vasudeva explained, Nanda will soon go to this Rakshasa disguised as Kamsa and pay taxes. Nanda will... Nanda will meet him then. I am very eager to know about his son. We will meet by auspicious events. Balarama, who is not different from him, should also be maintained. Mm -hmm. After hearing this and having worries, Nanda fed the messenger and meeting with his elder and younger brothers, reviewed in private what the messenger had said. Upananda said, what Vasudeva has said is correct. By paying the tax, we can keep the serpent's mouth closed. Mouth closed. Taking his brothers to heart, Nanda informed the messengers who approached in the morning. The dear messenger informed me the messenger who approached in the morning. Dear messenger, go to him and informing or inform him of the auspicious news of a son and other news which will give joy to his heart. On the instructions of my brothers, I will gather the taxes and distribute gifts everywhere. And distribute gifts everywhere. Tell him we will come in five days. When the messenger left, Nanda arranged for Yashoda's bath and daily celebrated huge festivals, bringing respectable people along with priests to see her. Nanda looked at the new child, bringing respectable people along with priests to see, along with priests to see her. Nanda looked at the new child. Just by the nectar of seeing Krishna on that most auspicious day, sacrifice was performed, a sacrifice was performed. Just by the fragrance of hearing about him, they became capable of manifesting perspiration, hair standing on end, and tears as if they had attained the tender child after many births and were carrying the dearest object. He invited the chief people to see the child and they all came. As well, many who were uninvited came to see the child. Will not the lotus pond spread with lotuses automatically attract the bees? 
though the cowards repeatedly saw the child in the lap of upananda's aged wife in front of yashoda in a huge house having many doors and spread with cloth made of deer's hair they could not be fully satisfied since they had to move aside to allow others who were behind to come forward a sacrificial priest spoke to upananda's wife telling her it was not necessary to rise on seeing him or other elders as as he said this he began to tremble in bliss with tears in his eyes he sprinkled white rice and offered swasti prayers in front of krishna and asked questions as children will seeing the child they said to other children with joyful hearts his beauty is clearly visible but cannot be understood by any amount of words out of bliss others could not answer because of choked throats or because they had not heard those words people gave so much cloth and ornaments that the child would not have enough to wear monthly until his kaishora age nanda gave gifts equal to an infinite storehouse uda people gave so much cloth and ornaments that the child would have enough to wear monthly until his kaishora age nanda gave gifts equal to an infinite storehouse those who saw the child took away his beauty to their houses that beauty was both natural and produced the natural beauty was his eyes and other features the produced beauty was that created by his clothing and ornaments when people saw that pleasing child and went home they continually kept seeing him in their minds for several days after making arrangements for his elder brothers to protect the child when he went to mathura nanda began to think as he traveled to mathura after making arrangements for his elder brothers to protect the child when he went to mathura nanda began to think as he traveled to mathura though my mind usually gives equal regard to friend and enemy i have become very attracted to this boy is there a long life i'm going to an evil person i become very attracted to this boy such that i do not desire a long life i'm going to an evil person and do not know what will happen looking at this child repeatedly to drive away my agitation let me go to mathura before going to mathura nanda looked at the face of his child on his lap repeatedly and before going to mathura nanda looked at the face of his child on his lap repeatedly and experienced bliss he kissed the child's forehead and cheeks and embraced his body he kissed the child's forehead and cheeks and embraced his body but could not be fully satisfied yet this sustained him on his way back, way to mathura The nurse said, "Oh, dark child, your father is asking permission to go to see the king. Please give him permission." With his astonishing childlike nature, Krishna smiled. Seeing this, Nanda departed with a steady heart. While remembering the sweet smile of his son and trying to hide his love, he talked to the cowards joyfully. He seemed like a yogi immersed in the bliss of Brahman. Arriving at Mathura, Nanda offered the taxes to the officials and left his carts to please Kamsa, who accepted them through his officials from a distance. Nanda did not go to Vasudeva's house so that Kamsa could not understand his attachment to Vasudeva. Snigdha Kanta said Kamsa was inimical to the good and had criminal hatred towards newborn children. He was greedy for others' wealth. How could he act nicely towards Nanda, who was endowed with Vedic culture, who had just astonished the universe with the birth ceremony of his son, and who was famous for having unlimited wealth? Madhukanta said it was previously said who could not be bound by the good qualities of the moon like king of raja rightly famous for those qualities snick the kanta said then what happened madhukanta said then nanda made a plan to meet vasudeva in a secret place and vasudeva then came to meet nanda along with a special servant when vasudeva arrived nanda spreading effulgence everywhere rose up in respect and went towards vasudeva 
with attachment he embraced vasudeva and vasudeva embraced him but they did not bow to each other since vasudeva was elder being of kshatriya birth and nanda was elder in years not only that but they had great affection for each other and thus did not bother with formalities this is made clear by shukadeva when nanda maharaja heard that vasudeva had come he was overwhelmed with love and affection being as pleased as if his body had regained its life seeing vasudeva suddenly present he got up and embraced him with both arms shrimad bhagavatam 10.5.21 in this example to show nanda's attachment to him nanda is represented as the body and vasudeva as the life air the life air can move in some other body but the body cannot exist without the life air mm -hmm. but vasudeva coming to nanda's encampment out of love was worshiped like a guest by nanda and satisfied by his behavior spoke with attachment about the two new children dishya brata pravas pravayasa idanim aprajasyata te prajashaya nivrutasya praja yat samapadyate samapad dear brother nanda maharaja at an advanced age you had no son at all and were hopeless of having one therefore that you now have a son is a sign of great fortune shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto 5th um, chapter 23rd verse like the milk ocean with full affection which did not increase or decrease and with a deep voice Nanda lamented the destruction of Vasudeva's family by Kamsa fortifying his will with the acceptance of karma he produced happiness in himself and Vasudeva by sweet and truthful words while understanding that Nanda had completed his duties Vasudeva allowed him to return home since he understood the troubles would be occurring in the future in fact Nanda had already left for home in his heart but now he brought his body back to raja let the story of raja unfold as they had previously discussed and decided the demons call for the daughter of bali putana as they had previously discussed and decided the demons call for the daughter of bali putana as the ox kills young ducks she came to raja in the night to kill all children she appeared like a locks in disarray she has sharp teeth for gathering and biting the babies and huge lips her eye sockets were like paths with eyelash eyelashes like snake hoods and eyes like snakes by all this she made the universe unsteady in mind on a chest where two breasts flowing with poison whose fire was impossible to endure thus she caused fear in all beings what more can be said fearful to all just by her sight she could do with children like a pile of rice knowing the possible danger from archers knowledgeable of the narayana arrow in nanda's protection putana assumed an attractive form giving up a other extraordinary form now knowing the possible danger from archers knowledgeable of the narayana arrow in nanda's protection putana assumed an attractive form giving up her other extraordinary form the people thought that the incarnation of the goddess of wealth had come to earth looking for shelter thinking she would take shelter of nanda's child full of all qualities and wealth they did not recognize her intentions in that new form seeing a form the bewildered guards could not prevent her from entering the nurses protecting the child also could not understand her intentions however the two sided de- Kamsa could not go to places where topics of Krishna were being recited or heard. She was a demon who could kill children of people who were not inclined to Narayana. <laughs> In order to create the pastime of Putana coming to Raja, Yoga Maya spread her illusion. By the influence of Maya, Putana did not divert her gaze but overcoming all people, stared only at the child in Nanda's house. Like an ember covered by ashes, no one could see the powers within krishna since yoga maya made him appear like an ordinary child though he could at once manifest powers like a blazing fire
Yoga Maya, thinking of auspiciousness for Nanda, revealed Krishna's intelligence from birth, but absorbed in his pastimes in which relatives showed affection. He did not show that intelligence disregarding Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya, thinking of auspiciousness for Nanda, revealed Krishna's intelligence from birth, but absorbed in his pastimes in which relatives showed affection. He did not show that intelligence disregarding, disregarding Yoga Maya. But when the opportunity arose, Yoga Maya was able to determine her service and reveal it in relation to Krishna. Thus recognizing the demon, Krishna closed his naturally beautiful eyes. As a snake puts a mongoose in it, it is a mouse. Putana fearlessly put Krishna on her lap, thinking of easily killing him. Snigdakanta said, Elder brother, why did the two mothers not prevent this unknown woman and not consider her identity? Madhukanta said, It was previously said that Yogamaya was the cause, and Putana used a tricky means to execute her task. When Putana entered the village, she took a form like a pot ornamented with gold bells, hiding her nature as a snake. Her breasts were covered with tears and floored with milk. In this way, she bewildered the two women. With choked voice, she said, Oh, Yashoda, you have become very hard because of many duties. Therefore, Rohini, with steady affection for your son, has been of great benefit. Keeping the tender child on the bed, you must carry out many duties and you do not pay full attention to the child. One keeps the life fair in the heart. What to speak of keeping this child dearer than the life fair in the heart? Your hearts are hard like those of demons. As Lakshmi, by my extraordinary powers, I have heard about this son and come immediately. Just as the ja jasmine becomes joyful in spring, in the same way, my eyes become joyful on seeing this child, my breast spreading auspiciousness everywhere or flowing with nectar. If the child drinks this nectar, he will attain a perfect body. I will become his nurse and give him happiness. Snigdakanta said, what happened when she took the child? Madhukanta said, taking the child by trickery, the poisonous Putana put his lotus mouth on the tip of her breast. With fear, Snigdakanta uh, said, then what happened? Madhukanta spoke with a laugh. On seeing the evil she-demon in place of his mother, Krishna purified her of her milk and the faults of her body by the power of his anger, which kills. Because of the slight resemblance of a motherly attitude in her, he adopted a sweet attitude, as if spreading perfume over her body and then sucked her milk with anger. Just as the Ganga purifies the water from the um, Karmanasa Manasha River, the milk from Putna's breast became purified by Krishna's drinking it. Elling, let go of me. Ailing, let go of me in great pain. She freed herself from her life as she was able to pull Krishna from the chest since she had been purified. Leaving, she was able to pull Krishna from her chest since she had been purified. Leaving Vraja like a flying bird, she gave up her body. Seeing this, everyone thought some terrible sound has arrived in Vraja. Going to the place, they saw that Putana had assumed her natural form. Taking the child who was holding onto a chest, she flew in the air. The life heirs of the two mothers. Taking the child who was holding onto a chest, she flew in the air. The life heirs of the two mothers also quickly flew away from the lotus of their bursting hearts. If the two mothers had not fainted when the child was taken by Putana, how would they have been able to endure the situation? They could not and would have died. <laughs> the devatas thought that her cries were a thunderbolt, that the wind from her flying was the final devastation, that her falling to earth was an earthquake, and that her dead corpse was a mountain range. Coming close, they understood the strange creature and remained near Putana for some time. They understood it was Putana. The child was stuck to a chest, holding the tip of a breast. In their hearts, they recognized Krishna's power and they laughed heartily. The Devata said, the huge she-demon who took a small form, 
the huge she demon who took a small form to take the child has been destroyed. It is not surprising. The poison of Putna's body must necessarily be destroyed by this child who is a moon with a body of nectar. When poison contacts another object, it also becomes poison. If nectar contacts poison, it becomes poison. How amazing. When Krishna with nectar limbs contacts poison, he remains nectar and Putna remains poison. Neither has been transformed. Putna, like deceitful knight, when poison contacts another object, it becomes poison. If nectar contacts poison, it becomes poison. How amazing. When Krishna with nectar limbs contacts poison, he remains nectar and Putna remains poison. Neither has been transformed. Putna, like deceitful knight, took on a huge form to oppose the boy possessing fresh rasas, giving sorrow to the duty to the day lotuses and tree lotuses, giving bliss to the night creatures who oppose the sun, she met her destruction. Krishna indicated this by the cleverness of his actions. The breast is the life for the child. When you offer your breast to my mother and I drink from your breast, if you die, what is my fault? Please tell me. <laughs> Snigdakanta said, Ha! Ah. Ah, how did Yashoda and others maintain their self-control? How did they associate, uh, their associates resolve the issue? Mother Kanta said, making a deafening clamor, the elders and middle-aged women ran here and there, leaving Yashoda and Rohini. Some by good fortune saw Putana huge like a mountain fall from the sky. Without fear, they approached and climbing on her arms, which had fallen to the ground by chance, they took Krishna, who was playing fearlessly on a chest. Out of excitement, they ran quickly to the house without looking back. The women came to the great inner chambers with many following behind. They had seen the event and with joy and unsteadiness came there leaping and jumping. They saw Yashoda and Rohini unconscious and became completely bewildered about what to do. After a few moments when all methods failed to revive them, one old intelligent woman placed the child in their laps. When this happened, their life has written by the nectar of the child's presence. Seeing the child, they again fainted in bliss. They then returned to consciousness, but wept as if moistening the dry summer earth. When they saw the child, tears fell from their eyes like iron needles, giving them the same pain they had experienced before. The tender child was brought so that he could drink their milk. Thus the two women gradually began steady. They embraced the child, looked at him, kissed him and smelled his head. They placed him on the ground and performed Aratrika. Putana truly existed and this child, your son, he still exists. They clearly established this. The two mothers without fear began to see Krishna as the subduer of Putana. Then Yashoda said in astonishment, go and see Balarama. Saying this, understanding that she wanted to run to him, Rohini prevented her and with many women went to another room and seeing the child with auspicious marks, performed rites to protect him. She then brought the child to Yashoda who desired to see him and satisfied her. The mothers then bathed Krishna in cow urine and protected him with mantras, hearing which the learned sages becomes, became surprised. <laughs> Seeing this great danger, Yashoda spoke to the older women in a choked voice. We had no great desire for children, but you, by your desire, that you have given this child to us and we offer him to you. To you. She touched the child to the feet and shed tears. The old women, losing control, quickly took the child and said, O oh, Yashoda, may whatever pious acts we have accrued from our paternal and maternal lines give auspiciousness and happiness to this child. With tears, they worship the child by Aritrika. All remain blissful to give comfort to Yashoda. The two mothers and others then began describing the horrible acts of Putana from what they had seen. The two described how Putana came, what she said and what she did. While doing so, their voices wavered and the syllables and words became unclear. Other women then described in choked voice how they came on the scene and what they saw. On returning to Vraja, Nanda and others saw from afar the corpse of Putana. 
in loud voices they discuss amongst themselves as follows we cannot see the form clearly because of the many crows flying about it has turned to ashes by the rays of the hot sun it is funny because of many joints sticking out it's decorating part of this huge thick forest it appears like a cloud stuck to the earth from far away we should think of vasudeva's warning about future disturbance in vraja perhaps it's a mountain whose wings indra cut off which regained its wings and then fell here speculating in many ways on seeing directly when they showed fear humor and curiosity after a few moments some came close and described it doubts were resolved and after a few moments some came close and described it doubts were resolved and reality dawned on them that dreadful form which had appeared nearby spread fear in all hearts they understood that the body of putana had fallen in braja hearing that putana had take had taken his child and that the child killed her nanda fainted but immediately came to consciousness he was like a person who beaten by a snake quickly applied special mantras to save himself with amazement he heard saw and experienced everything first he heard putna's body fell down and spread out for six kroshas the body was two kroshas wide and one krosha high one krosha is approximately 2 miles she fell outside of raja her length could be covered in two praharas a prahara is 3 hours walking in one direction and a width could be covered by walking one prahara in the other direction uh, no living beings except the trees were harmed he then saw the body on the orders of upanandan on the orders of upanandan others persons of lower birth quickly cut up the body which was spread out with bones as hard as thunderbolts using hard axes they piled the pieces up in one place and carefully burned it one cannot describe the strength of the people such as leather dealers and blacksmiths living outside the abode of raja what to speak of the strength of those within raja he experienced as follows he experienced as follows one does not attain the sweetness of krishna even after many millions of yugas but putana though wanting to kill him one does not attain the sweetness of krishna even after many millions of yugas but putana though we are wanting to kill him on touching krishna's body became most fragrant the fragrant sm- um, smoke from a body was like a messenger when others entered the village on other days they were attracted by the smoke Nanda quickly went to the village to see Krishna when he approached his body was soaked in tears he remained standing for some time his arms held by his friends most sober nanda regained control and surrounded by a few friends went to the raised platform in the large courtyard and sat on the throne most sober nanda regained control and surrounded by a few friends went to the raised platform in the large courtyard and sat on the throne then his wife came with many close friends took the child held by upananda's wife in her own arms and placed him in the lap of nanda thinking the child had perhaps been tormented in the night by some ghost he looked at the child who was like the full moon tasting the beauty of his form drinking the pleasing nectar of his face tasting the beauty of his form drinking the pleasing nectar of his face Nanda experienced an indescribable touch of happiness without compare he experienced the fragrance of the head of his dark tender son and astonished the whole universe with his bliss seeing his son's happy face he said if narayana has given this son by his mercy he will accomplish everything and pardon my bad conduct while he was absorbed in saying while he was absorbed in saying he will accomplish everything while he was absorbed in saying he will accomplish everything truthful pournamasi with matted hair entered from behind immediately everyone arose and offered respects with their minds they worshiped her by offering a seat after understanding through questions and answers about putana the king gave necessary orders to questions and answers about putana the king gave necessary orders 
as previously he gave unprecedented charity for good karma, making her the chief object. Finishing the story of Putana, Madhukanta, taking the permission of Narada, made the following observation. O oh, Nanda, you have given birth to a child. Madhukanta, taking the permission of Narada, made the following observation. O oh, Nanda, you have given birth to a son who has liberated the she-demon Putana who kills children. He considered her as follows in his heart. Previously, she desired to drink children's blood. Now she has become the nurse of Krishna. Is this a low destination or a high destination? I'm utterly confused in my heart. Whatever the case may be, the day's topic was finished and all suitably returned to their houses. Chapter 6. Breaking the cart and other pastimes. The next day at the splendid assembly, Snigdha Kanta in joy, speaking. Madhukanta with sweet throat, please hear. Oh, Madhukanta with sweet throat, please hear. Day by day, Krishna revealed his beauty and gave joy to his devotees. This is summarized as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight people alone or in pairs, in groups or in many groups, infants, youths, elders or middle-aged persons enter the house to see the child. Playing with him, they made the child laugh and they laughed. Relatives from the mother's and father's side came in excitement to see the child with lotus navel whose eyes were dark as lamp black. Daily their eyes were filled with delight on lifting up the attractive cover and touching him with, while smiling. He had disheveled locks of hair and eyes fickle like the Kanjana bird. He had a smile playing on his face with shining tilak of, of Rochana and Kunkuma. The dark complexion child appeared splendid when three months old. The child looked about affectionately, smiling gently. He would move his legs and make small sounds and desired to be held. If he was not held, he would cry. And if held, he would laugh. Drinking milk, he would sleep and then awaken joyfully. After three months, according to the constellations, when the moon was in Rohini, Yashoda held the bathing festival of the child. At that time, an attractive bed studded with gems was arranged in the house with a little perfume pillow and fine sheets. The child shone like a sapphire on that bed. It appeared that a blue lotus was floating on the Ganga or Narayana was resting on the milk cushion. The child lying on his back, giving fame to his mother and joy to his father, full of strength and most attractive, turned over on the morning when the moon entered Rohini constellation. Seeing that the child was sleeping with his side pressing the bed down, the nurse informed Yashoda, filled with bliss and desiring auspiciousness of the child, At the order of Nanda, she called the women and arranged for a huge festival which would give happiness. During the festival, there were women assigned to protect the house. Those who were called to protect the place were ordered as follows. The child's birth constellation has arrived and there will be a celebration of the child's turning over. Many have come for this festival. You should remain here to protect the child. Repeatedly, you should remain here to protect the child. What thief resided in Raja? If there is a thief, the child will steal his heart. The rites were performed. The rites were performed with colorful music auspicious songs and chanting of Vedic mantras by the best brahmanas. Then the child was bathed, clothed in yellow cloth and ornamented. He was protected with mantras and glances to manifest the highest joy. Women came from everywhere and all were engaged in activities. To manifest the highest joy, Women came from everywhere and all were engaged in activities. They made the child lie in bed in the lower part of a cart as huge as a house, which was standing in the yard. 
and placed young boys of five years age around it. The bed was like a swing in the midst of four supporting pillars. The swing had coral feet and an emerald slab at the base. It was covered with ribbons and an even mattress of cotton. The baby was situated on top of this gently swinging bed. From the top, various colorful pieces of cloth hung down. Touching these with his hands, the child made sounds and laughed. After the worship was performed by the brahmanas, gifts were offered. The, this lasted for one and a half praharas without cessation. Another demon sent by Kamsa to find newly born children was in the sky thinking. Another demon sent by Kamsa to find newly born children was in the sky thinking. This child who has killed Putana is in the lower part of the huge car, cart. It seems no one can harm the child. Putana died on taking a disguised form. I will not take another form, but will do activities to fulfill my goal. He then entered the cart unseen by others. When the demon entered the cart, the wheel sank into the earth and the axle became tilted. When the demon entered the cart, the wheel sank into the earth and the axle became tilted. At that time, the child wanted to drink milk, but could not get any. Disturbed, he kicked up his foot, tender as a new lotus petal. In doing this, the cart without wings flew up in the air like a demon bird out of eagerness and then fell to the earth. Arjuna describes this in Vishnu Dharma. Talo Chritangram Guru Bharasaram Aya Ayama Vishtaravad Adhyajata Padagra Vikshepa Vibhinna Bandham Chikshepa Ko Nyakshakatam Yathatvam Krishna broke the cart with the tip of his foot, even though the cart was tall as a palm tree and very heavy, long and wide. Who except you could do this? This demon did not. This demon did not have a form and thus Krishna destroyed him just by his appearance in the sky. It is amazing that it happened simultaneously like the tala fruit falling and the crown and the crow landing on the branch. Krishna absorbed in this demon is known as Shakatashura. It is amazing that it happens simultaneously like the tala fruit falling and the crow landing on the branch. Krishna absorbed in this demon is known as Shakatashura Banjana. 108 names of Krishna mentioned in the Brahmanda Purana. At this time, the Devata spoke about Krishna in poetic language. At this time, the Devata spoke about Krishna in poetic language. The cart was standing in one part of my house. You entered this cart. And because of the cart, you went upwards. I cried incessantly. If you died, it's not my fault. <laughs> the cart was standing in one part of my house. You entered this cart and because of the cart you went upwards, I cried incessantly. If you died, it's not my fault. When the cart made groaning noises, people in fear ran in all directions saying, what is that? When the cart fell and they saw the child, they became completely bewildered and wept. Out of control, Yashoda, ignoring the onlookers like a woman possessed, quickly grabbed the child. When her limbs became afflicted with trembling, many women quickly came and held her up. When the cart fell, there was a rumbling sound like clouds. What is that? What is making that sound? It is a cart. What happened to the cart? It turned over. How suddenly it happened? Was that good? It was the mercy of Vasudeva. With such discussion, the leaders of Raja entered the area and saw the broken cart biting their lips. They stood there in astonishment for some time. Seeing Nanda quickly coming from outside to the inner area, all came and stood on both sides at a distance, giving him a place to proceed. Understanding what happened with the cart from the shouting of the people, he touched a child held by his mother to his forehead and gazed at his limbs. They became peaceful and then asked the boys who were around the cart, they pointed their forefingers at one boy. That boy spoke when the others stopped speaking. Stuttering, the boy spoke, hear from me. When he raised his foot and touched the cart, the cart went upwards like a bird. All the other boys imitating him began to laugh. The affectionate elders then dismissed the talk of the boys, but they had some doubt because they knew that Putin had been killed. 
after creating auspiciousness for the child by invoking good fortune, bathing the child, satisfying the brahmanas and getting the blessings of all present, Nanda returned the child to Yashoda's lap. Busy with caring for the child, she placed him on a bed in the middle of the house. The people then restored the huge cart to its previous position. Madhukanta then said, Oh child, it is impossible for a small child to upset the huge cart. Please consider and say, what does this incident mean? Snigdakanta said, Oh respectable brother, this is not so surprising. Since Yogamaya has made the impossible possible, do not ask about this again. Madhukanta said with a smile, Then what happened? Snigdakanta said, Nanda consulted with his older and younger brother. These two boys should live together because their mothers are fond of caring for both, caring for both. They are attached to both and they both are eager to do the right household duties. It's difficult to protect them separately. I'm waiting only for a favorable day set by the learned that one should do as one desires. Tell this to the Brahmanas and when they determine the proper time, arrange that the two boys stay together quickly with music, chanting mantras and prayers. Gazing at each other, stunned from a long time, on the pretext of tears, the two boys' hearts melted. From childhood, the two boys are attachment as brothers. When they saw each other, their attachment spread joy through the universe. From the beginning of childhood, Balaram and Krishna were together. They were the white rays and blackness of the moon. On all the festival days, festive days, on all the festive days, the two whose qualities could not be counted met with other young boys. Telling the story in the proper order, the story will be in a different order from what is, what is narrated in Bhagavatam. Skillful poets put the pastimes in proper order for taste, though Shukadeva spoke from intoxication of prema without following the proper order. The younger brother had passed a little less than a hundred days and Balaram had passed slightly more days. The mothers were with the children at all times and the father was there sometimes. They would ask the boys, is he part of a family? <laughs> when Nanda arrived, when the childhood became prominent and they recognized people, splendor spread in the village and the universe like an ocean of nectar. The mothers were with the children all, at all times and the father was there sometimes. They would ask the boys, is he part of a family? When Nanda arrived, when the childhood became prominent and they recognized People, splendor spread in the village and the universe like an ocean of nectar. Think, thinking of the appropriate day for giving the names to the children, Vasudeva decided on highly qualified Garga, an ocean of austerity. Going to him alone, he requested Garga to make arrangements for his sons. With a smile, Garga said, I know many things, but now give me instruction on what I should do. Vasudeva said, go to Raja quickly and perform the samskaras of the second born for the two boys living together without the threat ceremony or the marriage ceremony. The sage said, that's proper. I will do as you say. Go quickly. Vasudeva said, go to Raja quickly and perform the samskaras of the second born for the together of the second born without the threat ceremony or the marriage ceremony. The sage said, that's proper, I'll do as you say. When Garga arrived on the morning of the hundredth day, the village was attracted with millions of calves dancing about. Jumping here and there. Since the cows had gone to the forest, the pens were empty. Nanda brought only a servant with him to see the beauty of the ceremony. In, in that pure place, using the eight-syllable mantra, he performed worship of a shalagrama called Lakshmi Narayana, whom he had worshipped from childhood and who gave bliss to all by his excellent marks. When he had finished his worship, Garga, the most knowledgeable guru, the best of all sages, uh, with speech like the Sama Veda, arrived. Seeing the calves prick up their ears, Nanda understood that someone had come. Garga saw Nanda who was like the rising moon, not too, old, not too old, 
with dazzling face and eyes. He was solidly built tall with long arms, spreading joy in all directions. He wore white cloth and was ornamented in his ears and on his hands, which shone attractively. He astonished the universe with the affection he had for his son. Nanda had desired for a long time that Garga come to Raja. Since the sage was worthy of worship everywhere, why should he not be seen? He recognized Garga for being so famous. Nanda, with great pleasure, as if having drunk nectar, quickly offered him a seat and offered respects with folded hands, humility and great devotion, as if he were the Lord. He worshipped Garga shining like Brahman with many articles which remain after worshipping the Lord. He worshipped Garga shining like Brahman with many articles which remain after worshipping the Lord. He spoke, it's not necessary to ask about your health since when you come all is auspicious. But the wise ask expert questions from you who is filled with auspiciousness for their welfare. It is impudent to ask you to be welcome since you are most worshipable. As it is suitable in deity worship, it's suitable for you as well. One should not satisfy a person by words alone, though he has all wealth. Those who are incomplete in any way should be made complete. The devotee does not desire his own benefit, but works for others' benefit. The devotee does not desire his own benefit, but works for others' benefit. Since you have come for others' benefit, it's proper to tell you about the activities to be done. You know astrology and the Vedas. These are for the benefit of others. I ask you about this. Be merciful and shower these bo two boys, one born from me, another from Vasudeva, with the nectar of your knowledge. Hearing these words, Garga spoke in a choked voice. If the donor gives what the asker gives, they both obtain benefit. How much can the benefit be described? Praising the sage, Nanda whispered in the ear of the servant. Do this, now do this. He then had the sage inform him that Vasudeva, who was being harassed by evil Kamsa, he then had the sage inform him about Vasudeva, who was being harassed by evil Kamsa. While they were discussing, the servant, understanding the purpose of the visit, entered the inner chambers I entering the inner chambers and brought the sons on their mother's laps, putting the mothers in front, holding a gold plate with flowers and sandalwood. Putting the mothers in front, holding a gold plate with flowers and sandalwood, he came by a solitary route. Seeing from a distance, the two children on the chest of their mothers, he quickly rose as if influenced by mantras or gems. The reason for respect was the power of the Lord and nothing else, nothing external. Seeing the two boys playing in the laps of the mothers, his eyes stopped blinking and he could not prevent tears from flowing from his eyes. The mothers with their sons approached humbly and in silence offered respects to the sage. He gave blessing in a loud voice. Oh, son of Nanda, give bliss to your father, mother and all persons related to the dynasties and to all friends of the dynasties and to the whole universe. Oh, son of Vasudeva, give bliss to all. Garga, who had pronounced blessings, sat on his seat by the request of Nanda, in front and somewhat at a distance were the two boys. They were like Vishnu Kranta creepers with white and black flowers. On the order of the sage, the two women sat down. 
Gaga's knowledge senses became absorbed in the boys. Nanda waited for a few moments and then with folded hands expressed his desire. A qualified person can make another person qualified. One who gives qualification gets qualification from the Vedic knowledge. Among all knowers of the Veda, you are the best. Please if perform the samskaras for the two boys born of the twice born. Gaga said, though you are a, you're born in a Kshatriya dynasty, your mother's side comes from respectable Vaishyas. Brahmanas who have become gurus for Vaishyas should do your samskaras. Brahmanas who have become gurus for Vaishyas should do your samskaras. I should not do them. Nanda said, that's true. But sometimes with special qualification, the norm, normal rule is replaced by a special rule. A person who has faith in renunciation with non-violence, a person who has faith in the path of renunciation with non-violence will reject violence to animals in sacrifices. A person who has faith in the path of renunciation with non-violence will reject violence to animals in sacrifices. Your position as a Brahmana achieves importance by the general rule. How can that important position be decreased by our dynasty, which has strong faith? You know this by many scriptural proofs. Therefore, do not consider. You know this. How can that important position be decreased by our dynasty, which has strong faith? You know this by many scriptural proofs. Therefore, do not consider anything else at the moment. After you perform the name ceremony by that beneficial act, our priest will benefit. After considering, Garga spoke something which should be kept secret. What you say is true. The killer of Devaki's son's evil, evil Kamsa will be worried by the words of Durga. She said, a famous guru of the Yadu dynasty will perform the samskara for the child. <laughs> a famous guru of the Yadu dynasty will perform the samskara for the child. Because of Vasudeva's worship, she became this child. Divine messages are never false. Otherwise, my doing this would be fully condemned. Divine messages are never false. Otherwise, my doing this would be fully condemned. Hearing this, Nanda became disturbed after considering Garga spoke something which should be kept secret. What you say is true. The killer of Devaki's sons, he will come, sir, will be worried by the words of Durga. She said, a famous guru of the Yadu dynasty will perform the samskara for the child. Because of Vasudeva's worship, she became substituted for this child. Divine messages are never false. Otherwise, my doing this would be fully condemned. Hearing this, Nanda became disturbed for a moment. Again, with the chanting of the auspicious prayers, everything would be proper. Thinking in this way, he spoke. Alakshitos min rahasi maam kair api govraje kuru dvijati samskaram swasti vachana purvakam. Since your association is auspicious, secretly chant the Vedic hymns and perform the purifying process of second birth here in the cow shed of my house. Anyone else, even my relatives. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 8, Verse 10. Garga said, Let that be. By your desire, things will be auspicious. The time has become suitable unexpectedly. Let the name ceremony begin. He then performed the invocation for auspiciousness, indicating the elder brother he spoke. Since he will be praised by friends for having the best qualities and will give pleasure to unlimited people, he will be called Rama. Because... Since he will be praised by friends for having the best qualities and will give pleasure to unlimited people, he will be called Rama. Because he's strong, he will be called Bala. Because he's equally divided between you, Nanda and the Yadus, including Vasudeva, he will be called Shankarshana. Indicating the younger child, he said, in Satya, Treta and Kali Yugas, he's white, red and yellow. According to his particular mood. Because his Shama, the root of the forms, is called Krishna in this birth. 
in satya treta and kali yugas is white red and yellow according to his particular mood because his shama the root of the forms is called krishna in this birth because your son was born from vasudeva in a previous birth he is he will be called vasudeva if i do not know all the names describing his qualities and activities and do not know all his forms which are praised by all people other certainly cannot know <laughs> in bliss nanda said to the sage all this does not stay in my mind you being omniscient are my shelter nanda again spoke please inspect the good and bad results for my son when he said this good when he said this garga filled with the power of brahman laughed and inspected the good and bad signs of the child these indications have been described in the astrological text called kamanikya sky ruby the moon Mer mars mercury and saturn are exalted the ascendant in taurus jupiter is pisces the ascendant is taurus Jupiter is in Pisces, the eleventh house. The eleventh house. The Sun is in Leo, Venus is in Libra, and Rahu is in Scorpio. It is the eighth lunar day of the dark moon. Plays at midnight on Wednesday during Rohini constellation. At this time, Lotus said Krishna Param Brahma was born. the moon was in taurus mercury was in virgo saturn was in libra and mars was in capricorn since your son was born in the year called vibha vasu the universe and vasu will be pleased with him since he was born in rohini constellation he will be the lord of thousands of cows since his ascendant is taurus he will be lord of millions of bulls he will be lord of millions since his ascendant is taurus he will be lord of millions of bulls since his planets are dignified he will have great majesty the sages will concentrate their minds on him because of his power the sages will concentrate is their minds on him because of his power he will speak all scriptures by his power and destroy the demons while protecting the devotees it's useless to say that you as a mother and father will attain good fortune he will be auspicious for the he will be auspicious for the whole world and for listen he will be auspicious for the whole world and for auspicious shiva his amazing actions will produce great bliss he will be auspicious for the world and for auspicious shiva his amazing actions will produce great bliss for many people his may his amazing actions will produce great bliss for many people he will protect the devatas while afflicting the demons proud of their previous powers is not surprising that he will deliver you since you are prema but he will also liberate all people with false sentiments oh nanda your son with all good qualities is equal to narayana be careful to protect this child with all your power wealth and fame because you have control narayana you have such a son o oh, king he will not be able to protect himself unless you help him you will give him many names since he has qualities equal to narayana i have thus in brief given the meaning of this chart hearing this nanda was happy garga again spoke by your desire i have come and will perform the samskaras of the twice born for the two boys however piercing the ears and cutting hair cannot be done see already there are small holes in his ears i cannot cut the fine hair you should do the first grain ceremony you should do the first grain ceremony taking the thread gradually you can not do your own. taking the thread graduation and marriage you cannot do by your own efforts i will do this since i am knowledgeable of time and special sacrifices for a few moments garga just gazed at the two boys his mind enchanted when he saw that the two children were completely attached to their parents <laughs> he thought they might be aware of his disguised speech and became reserved 
With that reserved mind, he gave orders to Nanda and then left. But the two boys remained in his minds as if he was still situated in Raja. As he left, Nanda followed him, offered respects along with the two boys. Garga said, may you remain prosperous with the cows and your son. I'm going now. Nanda began thinking of his good fortune internally because of having this beautiful son. After a long time, I've got a son. Because of such full bliss, I should think that he's equal to Narayana. The great souls have indicated this. I've thus become full of bliss. Secretly, he sent millions of cows with gifts as well as gold coins, red like Indra Gopa insects to Garga through coward men. Please use this for your own and other sacrifices. Calling the local Brahmanas, he then gave joy to all. Calling the local Brahmanas, he then gave joy to all by celebrating a huge name giving ceremony publicly. Understanding this, Madhukanta spoke with a choked voice. The name giver gives fame to another person by giving him a name. In this case, the name giver Garga became famous by giving names to Krishna. The name giver gives fame to another person by giving him a name. In this case, the name giver Garga became famous by giving names to Krishna. Madhukanta thought, Garga has said that Krishna is Harisama, equal to Narayana. This is correct. Taking the phrase as a Bahuvrihi compound instead of a Tatpurusha compound, Krishna is equal to Narayana. Taking the phrase as a Bahuvrihi compound instead of Tatpurusha compound, Krishna is equal to Narayana. The The meaning becomes clear. Krishna is superior to Narayana. He who um, Narayana is similar. Who um, Narayana is similar. Taking the phrase of a Bahuvrihi compound instead of a Tatpurusha compound equal to Narayana. Mm. The Krishna is equal to Narayana. The meaning becomes Krishna is superior to Narayana. He to whom um, Narayana is similar. He spoke aloud, you have not described the name giving ceremony in detail or the giving of grains at all. Please describe this. Snigdakanta spoke with a smile. The name giving and grain giving both took place in Raja as great festivals. This is my desire. I cannot describe anything else. Snigdakanta spoke with bliss. Please hear what happened next. Please hear what happened next. After Gargad has, had given the names and left, from that time Nanda and his relatives called Krishna and Balarama by those names. When Krishna and Balarama listened with attentive ears, gazed with their eyes, mistook a call for their brother as a call for them and made their ornaments jingle in a solitary place, all the relatives became filled with bliss. When Krishna and Balarama listened with attentive ears, gazed with their eyes, mistook a call for their brother as a call for them, and made their ornaments jingle in a solitary place, all the relatives became filled with bliss. Yashoda, whose complexion was like that of a rain cloud, called her son by the name given by Nanda, looked at his sweet, happy face and heard his indistinct sounds, which were nectar for the years. She spread bliss throughout the universe. The yard of Nanda's house became the arena for the crawling. Children who could walk came and became joyful in the company of Krishna and Balarama. Even today, the poets sing, Glory to you, Balarama. You give happiness to Yashoda by crawling, showing your infant pastimes and your smile. You destroy the suffering of hundreds of people. You carefully move your feet in order to give happiness by the sound of your bells. You enter fearlessly into all the yards. You do not consider the dirt while happily playing, associating with unknown people, associating with unknown people, you give them benefit. You go to your mother quickly. You hide yourself in the cloth covering Yashoda's breast. You hold the breast flowing with milk in your mouth. Like a lion, you smear your limbs with dirt. You're beautiful with dirt, mostly removed by Yashoda. Drinking milk of one breast, you hold the other breast and your lustrous face is covered with the milk. 
though Kaumara age generally lasts Though Kaumara age generally lasts for five years, in this case it lasted. But that youthful period of Kaishora, which derides previous and later ages, does not waver. But that youthful period of Kaishora, which derides previous and later ages, does not waver. It is present at all times. Kale Nalpena Rajarshe Rama Krishna's Chagokule Agrashta Janubi Padbhir Vichakramatur Ojasa. O King Parikshit, within a very short time, both Rama and Krishna began to walk very easily in Gokula on their legs by their own strength without the need to crawl. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.8.26. When Pradhyumna at one year's age came from the house of Sambara, Shukadeva says, from the house of Samba. From the house of Sambara, Shukadeva says, from the house of Samba, Shukadeva says, thus the women became bashful and hid themselves here and there, thinking he was Krishna. SB 10.55.28. When he was he has an infant, when he was an infant, when he was an infant, he was also at no, uh, no other stage than the at the when he has an infant. He, he was also, when he was an infant, he was also at no other stage than the Kaishora age. This means that he does not give up the sweetness inherent to his, in his mature body, though he's still small. This means that he does not give up the sweetness inherent in his mature body, though he's still small. The actual Kaishora age manifests with the feelings of love for the gopis. That bhava is described. Longing within the gopi for Krishna when he has an infant, when he was an infant, he was also at no other stage than the Kaishora age. This means that he does not give up the sweetness inherent in his mature body, though he's still small. The actual Kaishora age manifests with the feelings of love for the gopis. That bhava is described. Longing within the gopis for Krishna desires to actualize itself as satisfaction. Longing within the gopi for Krishna is itself a satisfaction. When satisfaction decreases, longing increases. Though from infancy the actions of longing and satisfaction did not desire to manifest clearly, those actions manifested as tender sweetness. Please taste the sweetness of the past tense in the proper way in verses such as the following. O King Parikshit, within a very short time, both Rama and Krishna began to walk very easily in Gokula on their legs by their own strength without the need to crawl. SB 10.8.26. Teaching Krishna to walk. In teaching him to walk, she would go let go of his hands, of his hands. But when he fell, she would let go of her hands. But when she would quickly go to him. In teaching him to walk, she would let go of her hands, but when he fell, she would quickly go to him. Going two or three steps and falling, he would cry, oh son, oh son, saying this, Yashoda would kiss him and rock him gently. Going two or three steps and falling, he would cry, oh son, oh son, <laughs> saying this, Yashoda would kiss him and rock him gently. When he showed his strength and walked a little further, looking at his mother's smiling face, he would give up bliss. When Krishna walked even further from her, he would go slowly. But when he came towards her, he would come quickly smiling, learning to talk. For the first, the honey of sweet words flow from the mouth of Balarama. The nurse made Krishna repeat the words. He said, ma, ma, ta, ta, and gave joy to his parents and all of Raja. The wonderful appearance of his teeth slightly showing and his pronunciation of words astonished Yashoda. The wonderful appearance of his teeth slightly showing and his pronunciation of words 
astonished yashoda and his pronunciation of words astonished yashoda the wonderful appearance of his teeth slightly showing and his pronunciation of words astonished yashoda are you fit for the world yes can you protect our friends yes in this way the mother and son conversed i remember krishna the good fortune of raja repeating new words i remember krishna the good fortune of raja repeating new words like a parrot pointing to objects and asking about what about them with his finger being taught words by his nurses asking about them pointing to objects and asking about them with his finger being taught words by his nurses taught by the mothers balarama learned to call krishna by his name taught by the mothers balarama learned to call krishna by his name and krishna called balarama older brother when asked the names of his body parts by an elder he had his mother teach him the names and would touch each limb with his finger he had his mother teach him the names and would touch each limb with his finger the brothers began to talk to each other come let's go and play mother will be angry no she won't in um this way krishna and balrama talked now hear of the naughty nature of the boys they wanted to touch the fangs of a ferocious animal the hood of an angry snake the horn of a cow the flame of a blazing fire and the sharp edge of a knife prevented by their mothers they became bold the mothers were astonished by that boldness and forgot their household cause and their bodies naughty child do not go far away there's some fierce beast living there hearing those words of their mothers they became more curious to go it was natural that the mothers should be who touch some dangerous object but poets say that such a situation indicates showing their power if an animal showed a ferocious nature the boys remain calm those fond of inference say that these boys would destroy all the sharp toothed toothed creatures gradually they became intelligent enough to fool their mothers fickle child do not go there hearing those words of their mothers they would laugh and with deception do what they wanted to do though they were young no one could understand where the boys went for play if they knew they were there the boys would hide and no one could detect, detect them the two mothers surrounded the path and engaging clever nurses all around they would catch the fleeing boys seeing them laugh or cry the mothers would bring them home and would get pleasure in rubbing them with oil bathing them dressing them feeding them milk and putting them to sleep when the assembly heard this description and smile krishna of kaishora age the leader of nanda's family along with balarama made his face attractive with a slight smile and gave delight to everyone's eyes when the assembly heard this description and smile krishna of kaishora age the leader of nanda's family along with balarama made his face attractive with a slight smile and gave delight to everyone's eyes in order to conclude snigdha kanta said o oh nanda you have given birth to a son who bewilders the sages you have given birth to a son who bewilders the sages with his fickle acts in childhood o oh nanda you have given birth to a son who bewilders the sages with his fickle acts in childhood when the joyful talks were completed noble nanda sent the speakers to their residences with ornaments and cloth as on previous day hari krishna thank you so much all of you for kindly listening to my reciting the wonderful pastimes of baby krishna and balaram thank you so much we'll continue this tomorrow hari krishna